Well, welcome back DIY car guys and car girls. Today we're talking about belt alignment or pulley alignment for your supercharged application. Now mine, it was pretty rough. I had to shorten the actual spacer or the hub that goes onto the pulley, that goes onto the crank. Then I had to do a lot of shaving on the top end because I moved mine around a whole bunch, up and down, spaced things in and out, trying to get everything back closer towards the motor. It was a nightmare. So I learned a lot about belt alignment or the things you want to do before you even slap a butt on there, start throwing them on your application. Today, I'm going to go over all of that. We're going to go over these tools right here that you can get, but it's very important that you have a repeatable process and that your tools are calibrated. Going over all that in today's video, let's get started. Okay, let's first talk about these little laser calibration tools right here. See, it's a laser. You can see it shining over there. I think this is the best repeatable method. Um, the string technique that goes from here to there, do not use that. Maybe it's better on something that has multiple pulleys. If you're going way out to the kingdom come, maybe use the string method, but I tried that. A straight edge on this works better, but there's one thing you have to be very considerate about when you're doing this. All right, look down here, look at this. The pulley is actually, that's on your blower, is thicker than the pulley that's on your crank. So what's that gonna do? So what it does is, the end of this is not gonna be the same as the one down here. So what you wanna go by is the individual ribs on here, not this, because if you put a straight edge on here, this whole guy comes out farther this way than that guy right down there, so if you're lining it up with the edge of this, then what's important is your ribs aren't gonna line up in the belt because the belt does not care about the outside of this. It only cares about the individual ribs and those ribs down there that it's riding on. Okay, so there's only a couple of ways your belt can be out of alignment. I know this is different thickness than that, but it's still still decent for illustrating the alignment and how it can be out of alignment deal. So here it is. Your belt can be out of alignment this way. It can be out of alignment this way. And it can be out of alignment this way. So those are the basic directions. And of course, every single one can be out of alignment. So you can see how getting all this in alignment can definitely be a tricky process. And let me show you the tool that I like to use because I think it works the best. And I'll go over what can go wrong and what you might want to calibrate next. Okay, let's talk about these uh, Deco belt calibration kits. It's very important that when you do any of this, you need a very repeatable process. And making sure these guys are actually calibrated, you definitely have to make sure they're calibrated. I didn't see any calibration instructions in there. I thought it can calibrate from the kit. I got um, two of them because I, I borrowed this from my buddy or another um, fellow car guy. And he was gracious enough to let me um, borrow this. He gave me a lot of insight in how to use it. But I was using it and I noticed I was chasing my own tail. And so I bought another one just to see how it was uh, calibrated. This one was different from this one. So I learned how to calibrate this. I'll show you how to do it next. But let me show you what's gonna happen if these guys are not calibrated. It's gonna screw you up. So here's the one that's not calibrated. Now I'm down here on the crank. If I move it like this, Watch this, I'm gonna put my finger here. See how it's moving? The tool itself is out of alignment. So if you're using a tool that's out of alignment, you're not gonna get your belt in alignment. Now I'm gonna take this one that I calibrated, I'm gonna put it down here, I'm gonna put my finger here and watch this. It is not moving around. But first, we need to make sure that these guys are calibrated. So whatever tool you're using, make sure it's calibrated. I came up with a method I'm gonna show you guys next. All right, so basically what you want to do, we got both of our lasers here, I'll show you the difference. You want to get one of these uh, big old long straight edges from Harbor Freight. And the reason why is because it has a nice groove right here for you to put this little feet of this guy directly in that groove. Make sure both of them 
are flush on that groove. So that way you can follow that laser all the way down the straight edge, see if it's walking. And then over here, we have another perpendicular line. I, I just have another straight edge there because I wanted to see how straight my garage door was. So we're going to follow up the garage door. It's pretty darn straight. So that way we can see if we got both our axes correct, so that when we put this guy on our crank, we know we are getting a real reading, right? Okay, so this tool has three set screws right here. And it gives you an Allen key to adjust them. So the middle one allows you to set it vertically. And these guys right here allow you to move it left and right. So you want to get it perpendicular vertically to whatever line you have over there. Make sure the line over there that you have a reference that it's nice and straight up and down because you don't want it to be cockeyed. And then of course you don't want it walking that way or that way on your ruler. So let me go ahead and set this one up and then we'll go ahead and check it out. Okay, so the only tip I have for you guys is time and patience. We got it all the way down that line and over there we are nice and straight up and down. Okay, so now that we have a calibrated tool, we can now use both these guys. Um, you don't have to use this. I mean, it does help kind of have you lined up. You can see if it needs to come this way or that way, your whole entire setup. So you put it, make sure they're both on the exact same rib. And then you can move this guy down and you can see where exactly it is on that rib. And that one was looking pretty darn good. Then you can move it to the opposite side. And you're going to do the same thing, put it on the same rib. And we can see that it's pretty much right on the money. Like so. Now, one more thing you need to do is, so we're going to take our straight edge. We're going to put it on the crank. And what this is going to allow you to do is see if it's tilted like this or like this because we know it's correct this way, but we don't know if it's correct this way. So I just have a filler gauge here, and technically mine should come slightly like this, but man, I tell you what, after like, you know, shaving this and putting washes on there for literally hours and hours and hours, we are gonna say that this is gosh darn close enough. <laughs> so take our filler gauge, and you can see right here, not going in but down here it's getting a still it's going in but it's still pretty darn tight right here right here and right here so basically depending where it's at on this location and your crank down here you can put this on there so I'm pushing actually the whole straight edge out with this one right here and right there so that gives you a good indication of where you are like this or like this and that's what the straight edge is for one more little tip for we have to go but if you look in the back side of this bracket this is where i decided to uh, do all my maneuvering like this way that way uh, don't pay attention to this this is just something i put in there so i can put some force up here because one thing people are saying is when this thing starts to rev up this will actually like bow this way or that way so this is my hope that i can put this guy right here and I can turn it in so I can pull it a little bit this way so that way I have pressure going that way and the belt has pressure that way and hopefully this guy won't flex too much but the way I did mine to manipulate it this way that way that way or that way is right here where the whole entire bracket is easier to manipulate this entire bracket right here than this bracket and I also put studs right here so I can slide it off and on and all you do is you take washers, different size washers, and then even these washers right here, you might have to put them on the belt sander and turn them down because you'd be surprised how much just one washer changes the geometry of this guy right here. You just kind of have to try it. I can explain it, explain it to my face is blue, but you just have to try it for yourself and figure it out because it is definitely a time consuming suck process.
Uh, my last bit of advice for you guys is definitely stud this when you can, depending on your setup. I know all there's a whole bunch of different setups, but if your setup, your blower, has a bracket that comes on and off like this that allows you to shim it, and you want to do it, like I said, one that has the least amount of points, that way you can manipulate that way, that way, with washers down here. And if you look at this, this makes it really easy to pull it off, slide your washers on there, like so, to shim it around, and then put it back on. Now, if you're gonna do that with trying to hold this with bolts and taking your blower off, that would be a nightmare. So whenever you can, definitely use studs to slide the whole unit on and off. Now, one more thing of advice, don't just slide it on and then take a measurement. Bolt everything back up, take a reading, then figure out which way you have to go, slide it back off and repeat. Repeat until this guy is fully lined up. It is a time consuming process. I can tell you that right now. Okay, lastly, let's talk about the washers you can find at your local hardware store. You're gonna probably find these at Tractor Supply. These are grade eight. And you can put those in the belt sander and you can grind them down to get everything perfect if you feel like doing that. The stainless steel ones are going to be thinner than the grade eight ones. So this one will allow you to shim it this a little bit less. Those are the ones you can find at your local hardware store. Now, if you go to McMaster Car, you can find shims in various sizes and thicknesses if you want to take that route. It's pretty expensive. Now, what I did get from McMaster Car was these rods right here. These are all thread rods, but this is the one you can find in local hardware store. This is not grade eight. This one right here from McMaster Car, this is what I'm using as my studs. Go to McMaster Car, you can find all this stuff and more. Uh, their website is actually very, very extensive and it's not very cheap. But if you're gonna get these, don't get them in the shorter ones, get them in the longest ones you can get, then cut them down to fit because that's gonna be a lot less money. And also what you can do if you really wanna get bouty about it, um, you can get bolts or these, sorry, these nuts right here that are stronger than grade eight also. So basically, I'm just overkilling everything because I want to be everything super rigid, super strong. So I'm just taking that grade eight to the next level. It is costing a little more money to do that, but you might want to consider this also for McMaster car. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you guys. I know it's, I kind of explained a lot, did a little bit of rambling, but if you watch it a couple of times, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. And when you start doing it yourself, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a time consuming process that really tries your patience and it's something you cannot rush until next time guys don't forget to subscribe and peace